Hey everyone, thanks for joining in. I'm going to present speedyweather.jl, a going to be 16-bit weather model with machine learning. Whether you came for the fancy videos or whether you actually wanted to learn something about weather and climate models, welcome. Um, thanks to our, all of our collaborators, this is absolutely work in progress, but I just want to present you the current state of this package. Last year, JuliaCon, I presented a 16-bit model. 16-bit meaning that all the equations can actually be solved just in half precision, just using 16-bit instead of double precision, which is usually the standard. So shallowwaters.jl here was ported to Fujitsu's A64FX chip, basically the first modern CPU that supports 16-bit arithmet arithmetic. And we applied a couple of tricks. So like scaling the equations, we used some compensated time integration in order to basically get very much the same result whether you use double or half precision but the bottom one being almost four times faster. The Fujitsu A64VX chip as you can see here on the right is also the one used in Fugaku so it's basically a nice study in, to show how we can leverage the capabilities of modern supercomputers. This year we really wanted to break with this model and aim for something bigger so we created speedyweather.jl with the idea to really solve equations on the globe and we also wanted to use a spectrum model because many models are grid point models but some models are spectrum models and for grid points models basically the results from last year already apply but spectrum models are a bit more complicated but also have a lot of big advantages if you solve equations on the globe. Then we wanted to go to 3D equations so not just 2D but in whether a lot of processes are still hydrostatic meaning that we can think about 3D as many stacked 2D layers. So then we also want to include climate processes like radiation, clouds, precipitation in order to make things more realistic and not just simulate a very idealized fluid. Then in order to include these climate processes, traditionally people use parameterizations. Um, so these are basically heuristic equations in order to get the, the effects back in that you can't resolve explicitly. Alternatively, and this would be really, really nice if we can have these parameterizations in a machine learned version. So basically saying you have some kind of reference data and then it learns how to, for example, correct for the flow over a mountain, whether there's gonna be precipitation or not. Ideally, this should also be stochastic because stochasticity is really beneficial if you wanna represent the variability at the scale that you cannot resolve explicitly. Additionally, we also wanted to push with these with a, such a kind of a spectrum model to go towards 16 or even 1632 mixed precision precision um, that would be really nice because then we can really leverage this uh, the speed advantage that you get on GPUs um, but in order to make the whole model more realistic with for example machine learned corrections it would also be really nice to have it automatically differentiable so you could use frameworks like enzyme in order to for example fit certain parameters uh, learn neural networks based on uh, based on the models and so on and so forth. So we created this computer what we call a computational playground, meaning that speedyweather.jl is not necessarily aiming to replace an existing weather forecast model, but it basically replicates it in a somewhat simpler way, um, but so that we can do a lot of research of how we should do things in the big models better. Uh, and so it will consist of a 16-bit dynamical core. Hopefully as much of uh, its computation will be done in 16-bit. If there's a few things that have to be done in single precision, that's probably going to be fine. But basically what we therefore need is a number format flexibility, right? And this is, Julia absolutely gives us the best um, the best framework for that. Um, there might be some, some parts where running errors have to be compensated. Um, ideally, we want to understand while the monitor is running how information flows through it. Um, and this kind of analysis, I've already talked about this last year, this is basically going to be leverage the same ideas. Um, then we would like to run such a model on different hardware. So if basically new hardware comes along, we would like to, to very easily port it to this hardware and check um, what are the advantages of this hardware? Can we certain can we leverage certain advantages of the new hardware or not? And then the last point is really this like machine learned parameterization. So we wanted to have a model that is differentiable um, in the way that you can, for example, then use existing data in order to fit your model to this data. So then, for example, certain parameters, either deterministic or stochastic, better represent, uh, let's say, transitions in the climate system. Um, 
or instead of using existing observational data, you could also just use the high resolution version of the model in order to, um, to, to use a low resolution version that is much cheaper to calculate, but has the similar accuracy as the high resolution version. And then the, really the big question for us is, how can we make sure this, that this more traditional dynamical approach and the machine learned approach, that these fit seamlessly together? So at the moment, um, speedyweather.jl solves the shallow water equations. They will soon be upgraded to, to 3D, but these are the equations that are um, currently used. And we combine this with the spherical harmonics. This is the, the spectral space that we often think about. Uh, and it uses these basis functions that you can see here, just a few of them. But in the end, we will go up to, let's say, 700 um, of these, which is then a, a lower triangular matrix of, um, of complex coefficients. And on every step, you then do this spectral transform. So this is something that we had to implement, the spectral transform between the spherical harmonic and the Gaussian grid. Um, the spherical harmonics are used for the linear terms and the Gaussian grid is used for the nonlinear terms. And then you basically transform back and forth in order to compute all your terms. So in order to make this possible in Julia, we are using fftw.jl, which is um, supporting the uh, Fourier, fast Fourier transform in single and double position. But soon we're also going to be needing um, a very generic version of a, of a Fourier transform so that we can really out absolutely type flexible and can run anything through this model that we need. Um, for this is the Fourier transform are the, are the zonal modes. And then in the meridional direction, we use the Legendre polynomial. So we use this package associated with Legendre polynomials.jl, which really helps us to um, compute the spectral transform in the meridional direction. So most of them, these polynomials are pre-computed in float 64, but then they can basically be converted down to any other um, abstract float format. As an example, if you just using speedy weather, then our main interface is this run speedy function, and you can basically choose just any parameters that you want in there. Um, we use then progressmeter.jl in order to show um, directly the speed at which um, the model is running, which we usually count as, uh, let's say, days per day, years per day, or millennia per day. And this is re was really helpful for development purposes. We use unicodesplot.jl to immediately show us a quick plot of what the what the final result is so that we can see like oh yeah that makes somehow sense or no this is absolute rubbish the model blew up and so just um the fancy video now at the end this is speedyweather.jl running in single precision at about 2000 by 1000 grid points uh, we have already mountains in there um, but there's not yet any clouds or precipitation it's, at the moment it's just simulating a single layer on a single core uh, but we're already getting reasonable speeds and i'm looking forward to port this soon to gpus and so if anyone wants to contribute you are more than welcome to otherwise check it out on milankel speedyweather.jl thanks for listening